Good morning and welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church of Gatlinburg. We're so happy you're joining us this morning. Some are here in the sanctuary and we greet those of you who are at home today. We're all gathered in the name and spirit of our living Lord and pray that God will bless this time as we grow closer to him. Um, I want to invite those who are here to stand in body or in spirit as you're able as we um, prayerfully use our call to worship from Psalm 96 and then we will remain standing for our, the singing of our hymn. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before our Lord, who judges the world with righteousness and truth. The Lord reigns. Let us praise the Lord. Amen. And let, we'll use our hymnals today, number 577. And Peggy Smith is here to lead us as we sing God of Grace and God of Glory, 577. Chapter 4, verse 26 through 34. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground. It would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the ripe full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, and at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest, harvest has come, he also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth, that when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make its nest in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as if they were able to hear it. 
And he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You so much. The locals around here know that I love the season of spring and recently in the uh, gospel lessons and, and the epistle readings uh, for the recent Sundays, we've been thinking of life in the spirit and new life and renewal and the breath of God uh, bringing us life. And so we've had some lessons about growing and uh, uh, renewal. And so today, here we have a gospel lesson about growing and planting. Uh, and so I just uh, want to uh, give a word for the season of springtime. I know that once the Memorial Day holiday has occurred, most of us in this society uh, think summer is here and uh, uh, but I like to, to linger until that vernal equinox, I mean, uh, excuse me, the summer solstice, uh, about the 20th of June. Uh, I like to really press for uh, observing springtime, all right? And so we had a, 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 a prolonged, nice, mild season, really. Here and, and what we call blackberry winter. So we had some nice uh, sunny but cool days and then we've had lots of rainfall recently. And so the farmers and gardeners are very happy about, about the additional um, amounts of water for gardening and, and growing things. And uh, so the greening of creation reminds us that God our creator is is always at work in our world, in our universe, in our communities, and in this beautiful part of creation, greening the earth and renewing it. And we are called to be good stewards of creation. And so we want to take care of our plants and flowers and gardens and all the little creatures uh, maybe you have a, a bird's nest in your in, in your yard somewhere or in the eaves of your of your roof at home maybe uh, and we know that the little baby birds have been born and are cheeping cheeping and and uh, their mothers are sending them out of their nest now that it's late springtime so it's a time of of new life it's a time of growing and uh, the birds taking flight can remind us that it's a time where we, we begin our own maturity, our own growth. And so we receive the gift of life from God, but then God asks us to mature as we can. And some, some have come to this area um, in the Smoky Mountains this particular season, this week, uh, for the synchronous firefly event. And you know that you need to go deep into the woods and uh, into our national forest to uh, be away from the cars and the lights of the houses and buildings and attractions uh, to see that spectacle, that phenomenon of nature that God has created. So there, there are many wonders in God's creation. And so this parable that Jesus is telling us that we're hearing today is about what can grow from small beginnings, from humble beginnings. And uh, so we think of planting something as small as a mustard seed. Um, we have some young people here today and I handed a couple of them uh, a little collection of mustard seeds. And I have some, maybe, you, maybe, you, uh, maybe you've planted some mustard seeds. I don't think mustard seeds are, are grow too well in this zone but uh, maybe you've used them for pickling spices or something, but you know, you might know how, how tiny a mustard seed can be, and yet a tree can grow from that. It's just a miracle, a miracle of nature. And uh, I asked Peggy Smith today, our music director, to, 
to bring her mustard seed that she's had all her life, a gift from her mother. And uh, when I, uh, at some point in the service, I will turn the camera, but I'm afraid to turn uh, the camera, but I will show, uh, hold that up again, Peggy, if they, could they see it? It's a sweater guard, you know, um, girls and women sometimes wear a little chain to keep your sweater uh, pulled together. And her mother gave it. Do you want to say something else about what your mother told you? When I was just a little girl, probably five or six years old, Mama dated this. Uh, well, I would say Mama and Daddy, but Mama was the one who put it on. Yeah. And she would say, now, if you have the faith of that little mustard seed, you can do wonderful things. Jesus told us that you can do wonderful things because a tree can grow from just a little mustard seed. So it was always very special to me, and uh, it, it, it's just very special. It's a wonderful well, it's a lesson that a lesson your parents taught you and that you've not forgotten. And that's remarkable that you kept it uh, from childhood. That one tiny mustard seed. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. Um, well, and um, so it's important to plant those seeds so that new life can come about. And um, so I was learning recently about... Um, a special type of seed called a heritage seed. And uh, there is a vault in Norway that uh, is a collection of seeds from all over the world. And it's an effort by most countries in our world to send seeds to this vault in Norway so that we can prevent a global famine to prevent a global famine. And so seeds are important. And maybe, maybe you've heard of heirloom seeds, and maybe some of you collect heirloom seeds. Uh, it's great to grow tomatoes from heirloom, heirloom plants. Uh, so we have, we have all sorts of seeds available to us, heirloom seeds that are very special to us, that remind us of our ancestors and their gardening and crops that help, help them to survive and thrive. <clears throat> and then the heritage seeds that, and that's an effort globally to ensure that, that there will never be a global famine ever again. So it's a good thing to know about and to, <clears throat> to remember and maybe even participate in. Well, the scripture lesson tells us about a particular type of tree, mustard mustard tree. Now, uh, it doesn't grow really naturally in this zone that we're in, but of course in, uh, in uh, the Holy Land, as we call it, uh, mustard seeds would grow. Um, here in the Great Smoky Mountains, <clears throat> we have a tree that is the largest one in the entire park. And I had to ask uh, some of my friends that uh, work so closely with the park. So where is this tree? I want to find it. And uh, it's out in the Cosby area of our Great Smoky Mountains. And um, it's a tulip tree. You'll see many of the tall trees around, uh, very prevalent here, many, many tulip trees. And so this one particular tree in our national park is uh, labeled as what we call a heritage tree. It's 25 feet in circumference. So uh, there aren't many trees in the eastern United States that uh, can surpass that, that size. And uh, so I'd like to go out on the trail there near Cosby and, and find, that, find that wonderful tulip poplar tree. And so we, we think about the biodiversity here. We're so blessed with 105 species of trees. The biodiversity here is just remarkable. It, it is a phenomenon. And, and for those of us who believe in God as our creator and in Christ Jesus as co-creator, it's exciting for us to see God's handiwork and beauty in these mountains, uh, in all creation, in all creatures. And uh, so we find ourselves hearing this lesson of Jesus' parable. Uh, here in June, the month of June, 
And for us in the church, it is a season that we call Pentecost or ordinary time. And so in the other seasons of the year, we're reading scriptures that point to Christ's coming and Christ's birth and the life of Jesus among us on earth and then Jesus is suffering and passion and death and resurrection and ascension. You know, all these seasons of the year teach us about Christ's life and what we believe as Christians by following closely his life. And so in the season of Pentecost, we know that we are in a season of faith that Jesus' living spirit is indeed with us. He promised his spirit would be with us and his spirit is indeed living and with us. And so for us, this is a season for growth. Jesus wants us to be growing in our faith. And the lesson helps us to see that if we will have just the faith of a tiny mustard seed, a miracle can occur with God's work in our lives and in our world to bless what we believe, to bless what we believe and to make it prosper and to make it productive so that we can help to transform this world as Christ envisioned it to be. And that's what it is to be the kingdom. So, so that lesson from the fourth chapter in Mark's gospel helps us to know what does it mean to live in God's kingdom? Well, it's a beautiful place. It's a place with trees that grow fervently. And it's a place with birds that sing joyfully. And all the creatures that share, that share the forests and uh, all of us as people. We are to share in God's creation, in God's kingdom, and order our lives by following him as our Lord. Now, Mark has this parable for us, as does Matthew's gospel, and also Luke's gospel has this same parable, but in a different order. So, in Mark's gospel, this is Jesus's first public sermon, according to Mark. So we want to pay attention. Why did Mark tell us this sermon of Jesus's first for us to hear? And so we look at, at scripture and pray for inspiration to understand. Jesus is inviting us to be participants in his life and in his kingdom. He doesn't intend to do all of the work himself, but calls us to use our faith to be a gift that others might know of God's saving work and justice and love. So we have to ask ourselves, how well are we growing today? If we were going out to tend our garden, we would check the plants and the fruits and the vegetables and the flowers, right? And we would see, have they grown any larger? Are they starting to produce blooms or fruit? And so it is in our lives that we need to, to take time to examine our spiritual selves. Are we growing? Are we blooming? Are we producing fruit? And like the branches of the strong mustard tree, are we allowing the birds or the people, so to speak, to come and find shelter? Think of all the people these days who need safe shelter. I have to look only as far as the porch of our church, right beside the office door, to know that there are persons who find shelter here at the house of God. We provide food and clothing and shelter, outdoor shelter that is. 
but we provide prayers, a safe place for people to rest who are weary, people who are tired or hungry or who need a, a listening ear or a pair of shoes. We're so glad to minister, to be a shelter. But how are other ways that we can be a shelter for persons who need a sense of assurance in this trying time of a pandemic, of, of unrest uh, socially, politically, throughout the world, in our own communities, where there are so many disagreements about how we should live. And in our churches, there are, and always have been, disagreements about how we should live in community. And Jesus' parable helps us see the kingdom of God, kingdom life, is a strong trunk and many branches that are fruitful and inviting for the birds of the air to rest and to be able to sing their songs. I heard Bishop Woody White preach uh, many years ago. He was our first African-American bishop in the United Methodist Church in the U.S. Uh, after we uh, had the central conferences. And so if you know your uh, church history and uh, racial history, you'll know about the central conferences. And so Bishop Woody White is a, a seminal figure in church, in our church history, and a, a wonderful, wonderful person. And so he preached at our annual conference many years ago and, and said that he was talking about a tree and a bird singing. And he was talking about all of the problems in our world with warfare and strife and violence and racism and sexism and all the isms and phobias and divisions in society and in our churches. And he said, he said, brothers and sisters, we have been twittering. Now, Bishop White used that term before there was a social media platform called Twitter, okay? <laughs> he was not speaking about the social pla uh, media platform. But he, he was suggesting that we become so comfortable in our faith or so complacent in our faith that we are not singing. We're just twittering. He said to be like the birds of the air that sing their song with joy and confidence. We need to be singing that song that others might know what it means to be included in God's, in God's kingdom. And so I want us today to remember the image of the branches that welcome all of the birds and the creatures. We don't want to be an exclusive church. And so may God help us to provide shelter in these branches of his kingdom. And we are part of that branch because of his love. There's a, a doctor from uh, our United Methodist related Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee. And he was talking recently about the COVID vaccines and, uh, and how churches need to be places where people can get vaccinated. He said, this is um, Dr. James E.K. Hildreth from Meharry. He said, the setting, the setting in which you get the vaccine matters because people want to be where they feel comfortable and churches represent a place of comfort and security for all people. That's how it should be. So, We'll think today, how can we be a safe shelter? Because we have been welcomed and know that assurance of God's love and justice and peace and inclusivity and acceptance by the love and life of Christ. And we want others to know that. And so I wanted us today in this season of June, which is also a time of annual conferences, uh, as, as bishops are helping us to look at our churches 
and and at each individual uh, at each individual's faith how are we doing by growing in our faith so I want to offer a prayer from the United Methodist book of worship about how we are to grow O oh, merciful Lord, our Creator, send your heavenly blessings upon this, your church, that all its members may dwell together in unity and love. Keep far from us all self-will and discord. Endue your pastors and laity with righteousness and enable us faithfully to fulfill our mission to bring again the outcasts and to seek the lost and grant to us so to receive this responsibility which is a gift from you to share it with others and to use your gift of grace that in all our words and deeds we may seek your glory and the advancement of your kingdom of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior, let the church say, Amen. Now, because uh, we have a special guest, I'd like to uh, see whether the Spirit has prompted uh, our friend from Chattanooga, Mr. Roland Carter. I introduced him earlier to the, the assembled uh, congregation. and. How, how is the spirit leading, uh, uh, Roland? Uh, are you feeling like uh, playing a tune for us? He's he's the spirit. Uh, Mr. Roland Carter is here from uh, Atlanta and uh, is a music minister there and and beyond and is known throughout um, uh, Christendom, <laughs> American Christianity. Anyway, uh, he he is the one who. Uh, uh, is the curator of African American song for us, and uh, Juneteenth is coming up this Saturday, Juneteenth, and I, I didn't know Roland was coming today, but the Spirit sent him today. You see, and so uh, could I hear an Amen that you think the Spirit is leading him to provide some wonderful music for us? Amen. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, the challenge comes with your sermon. <laughs> And uh, the, as we examine ourselves with what's happening in the world today, I want to take a, a, a spiritual and have us to, as John Lewis says, it, and no more weeping, no more crying. Uh, see something, do something. Don't be quiet. If you know what's happening, if you see something happening in the world, so we examine ourselves and see what we're doing. Juneteenth is that time when the slaves in Texas at the end of, by, uh, after six months finally got a chance to hear the reading of the Emancipation Proclamation in Galveston, Texas. And that's why it's Juneteenth on June 19th in 1865. So I'm just going to sing a phrase or I'm not a singer, I'm really a pianist, but I'm going to sing a phrase lovely, and more spiritual. Uh, which talks about freedom, oh freedom, oh freedom, oh freedom of me. Before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free.
Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, what a blessing. That was, you're a godsend today for all of us. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Jesus said uh, that the house of the Lord shall be a house of prayer. And so we come to our time to pray as a church family. And uh, we covet your prayers for our ministries, but knowing that we're part of Christ Church Universal through the ages and throughout every land. And so we, we ask for us all to be prayerful this day. And uh, in our community of faith, we love to start with the joy of celebrating birthdays. And so in this week of June, we're celebrating, giving thanks to God for uh, persons. And, and be sure to tell me if any of you uh, others are celebrating. Uh, we send happy birthday greetings to Linda Van Oosting and Gavin Knight and Peyton Messer. Uh, See, Gavin's about 16 or maybe 17 by now, 16 and driving. And Peyton Messer is 11 now. <laughs> and then Dennis Walters, I think he's beyond 11. But, uh, <laughs> and Ethan Wolfhart uh, will be 16 this week too. There's lots of teenagers. And then Lorna Gunningham. So God's blessings for those. And uh, any, any amongst our uh, guests today, any birthdays or anniversaries or celebrations? Anybody? Yes, I see a hand. Birthday. And what's the birthday person's name? Yeah. Say again. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was asking your name, not your age. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Jane. And birthday blessings to our son. He'll be 38 on Thursday. Jane and Scott's son will be 38 on Thursday. So praise the Lord for the gift of life, I tell you. We're learning to, to appreciate life more and more, aren't we? So thank the Lord for that. And uh, well, great. Any anniversaries, sir? Uh, well, the prayer list is printed before you in the bulletin. Uh, Opal Gott has been hospitalized this week to repair uh, a broken hip. So we covet your prayers for Opal and her family as they give her care. And uh, Theo Edwards asked us to pray for him, for his family, his niece and nephew in particular, uh, wanted to be remembered in our prayers. And uh, so thank you for remembering all of these. We, we uh, pray for God's blessings of healing and good health. And uh, in the case of comfort, we ask uh, prayers of comfort and offer our sympathy to Kay and Clark King, Connie and Arnie Walker, Mary Alice Cox, and the death of Bill Cox. And his funeral will be held this afternoon, 3 o'clock at First Baptist Church. Please remember them. And uh, every week we're praying for an end to the coronavirus and for, um, for the Lord to use us in a great way to, to be participants in uh, the, uh, the gift from God of abundant life and and good health for all persons. We pray for those who have no one else to pray for them. Uh, some of our friends who stopped by the porch for hiker bags uh, have been uh, in prison this week. So please remember uh, those who are in prison. And um, every week we're praying for an end to racism, for the dismantling of racism. And for an end to the suffering and the famine in Yemen and in Myanmar, in Jerusalem, uh, a part of the world where Jesus Christ walked upon this earth, we pray that people can stop fighting, that God will lead us and use us to be peacemakers. And then we have five silent requests, if you would remember these. Please. So we go to God in prayer. Most merciful Lord, Loving God, eternal God, God of life and light and love, creator of the universe, creative and creating one, we praise your holy name. As we come to you in prayer, we are so grateful, O oh Lord. In your greatness, you are gracious enough to hear us as we lift 
those things for which we are grateful, those blessings for which we are so thankful to have the ability to worship freely in this sanctuary. We're thankful. And to be assembled with brothers and sisters from far and near and to have families getting together for reunions. We're so thankful for blessings and, and for the blessing of, of Roland's music this morning. Bless us that we might know your word from Holy Scripture and, and from your speaking to us in prayer, Lord. Help us to listen and sing for you the song of justice and the song of hope where the world feels hopeless. And so we thank you that you're going to use us and that you trust us, Lord, to be workers in your kingdom. So may we not take these blessings and gifts for granted, but help us to stretch out our arms as strong, vibrant branches in your tree of life that all others in this world whom we meet and to whom we reach out will know they are included in your great family of love in Christ Jesus, made possible by his sacrifices and his matchless love. We're so grateful. And so use us in a wonderful way as we go from this time of worship this day. May we carry your song and your strength and your hope in our hearts that others might see a twinkle in our eyes or a smile on our faces and ask us, how can we find it? And we will point them always to you, for you are always near. You are always for us and you are always with us. We are your grateful people and most grateful of all for our Savior, Jesus. He is our example in our living. He is the exemplar of our faith. He is our example by his teachings. So we remember that he taught his disciples of long ago to pray in this way. And we join our hearts and voices with Christians around the world this day, praying this prayer to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying with us. I invite you to stand as you're able now for our hymn in response to the word. Seek you first. You'll find that on page 405, number 405 in our hymnals. Take you with us. sustainer, 
rest and abide with each of you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.